record on. Oh shoot, I should have probably changed the uh <laughs> the name of the stream, huh? You can't. That's a good question. I don't see why you couldn't right now. Isn't there just like a little title thing? No. I don't see any. Okay. Oh well. That's all right. <laughs> we're, I mean, we're streaming now. Well, I'll just change it, um, you know, later. Editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I don't know. What do you think, Cody? Do you want to get started here or do you want to wait a minute? We'll let some people tune in for a all second. Right. Say less. Looks like we have three viewers so far. So, hello, y'all. Thanks for joining our debut stream talking about team full gorilla tryouts we'll get started here in a minute after some more people join yeah. right coach v yep yep we're just vibing right now as you can see there's the rundown that's low-key more for us we'll probably be showing some clips as well uh just gonna throw this up there you know clips that we got from these tryouts on saturday and sunday and uh, yeah, and then we'll get started here in a minute here. I also have my, code. I don't know if you have, but I have my little piece of paper. I'm going to show it to the screen here with the list of a bunch of athletes um, because I did circle a couple. But uh, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll go, we'll go down the line. and Yeah, I, I also stuff. have my list as well. Okay, great. So if you hear a bunch of paper in the background, that's that. <laughs> so, so yeah. Just gonna take a look at some stuff. Make sure we're in a good spot here. Oh god. Bet. Um <laughs> if not a lot of people come here anyways, that's okay. We're gonna post this on YouTube and all of that. And so I'm not even really tripping about that, to be honest with you. I kind of just want to, you know, get at some good raw reactions, do all that great stuff. So, um, so yeah. All right. You ready to get this thing going, Cody? Yep. Let's go ahead and rock and roll. All right. Let's get this thing. All right. Uh, shoot. What episode would this be? <laughs> I'm trying to think. 103? 100. And three, should I check anchor real quick? I mean, I'm already it. doing it. Yep, yep, you're right, you're right, you're right. All right, okay, well. I, say, I'm, I posted episode 102, which if you haven't listened to it, go listen to the Curtis Jackson and Jaden Allen interviews, who are both former Team Full Gorilla guys. And, uh, with, and in that interview, attested to how awesome the competition and the coaches are over at Team Full Gorilla. But, uh, you know, before they were on there, they had to go through this. So, Simon, do you kind of want to talk about what the kind of setting was and kind of the intro and the day one kind of combine setup? Because I know I showed up for the latter half of the first day, so I think this is more in your realm to kind of lay down the foundation of how it went. Yeah, uh, well, first off, let's uh, let's talk about what Team Full Gorilla is, because I think a lot of people that will tune into this episode eventually maybe not like right away here in these next couple weeks but maybe down the line we'll be like oh, okay you know what what's tfg what's team full gorilla who are they right and so team full gorilla is a seven on seven travel team um obviously for football right and so that's they basically take all the best athletes from colorado um obviously <coughs> it's mostly skill players because it is seven on seven i think it's seven on seven two in touch is that right cody I want to say so, basically. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and so um, they go around the country, you know, all the best athletes from Colorado, and they compete against other 7-on-7 seven -seven teams. And so we're talking Cali, Texas, Florida, Louisiana, Ohio, the Northeast, New York, and all them boys. Like, they they 
give uh, our Colorado athletes a lot of opportunities to just go compete. And honestly, sometimes when it comes down to, you know, getting college offers and offers into the next level, you know, that's extremely important, right? Just getting that film because, you know, playing in Colorado, yes, there's a ton of good talent. I do believe that we are a top 10, top eight kind of football state, uh, Colorado, that is. But, it, you know, it says something to go out and play a Georgia, a team from Georgia or Texas or Cali. I know this year uh, they did get invited, Team Full Gorilla, that is, they did get invited to a couple pretty prestigious tournaments where teams with four-star quarterbacks and up could only enter. So if you don't have a four-star quarterback, you're out. You know, and obviously, the Colorado, we have Braden Dorman, you know, four-star quarterback, top 10 quarterback in the country and all that. And so we are able to uh, to go out to that in Cali. And then if I was, if I wasn't mistaken, I, I don't want to put words, you know, in their mouths or anything like that. But, you know, in our conversations, you know, the founders of Team Full Gorilla, uh, we, they did say that, you know, there would potentially be an opportunity for them to scrimmage the likes of Modern Day, St. John's Bosco all those big powerhouse private schools that have like a million four star three star five star guys in each of their classes and teams and so you know ultimately team full gorilla i would say is probably one of the best recruiting tools um that any athlete here in colorado could have because they also tour colleges as well and you know that matters putting your face in front of a coaching staff and getting to meet them and all that stuff and so team full gorilla you know ultimately they're an off-season program i would at least i would classify them as an off-season program but they do a lot to get our uh, colorado athletes out of state or maybe you know maybe not even out of state but to the next level you know playing football and all that and so i just gotta give them a big shout out and so if you make a team full gorilla team and cody correct me if i'm wrong but they had this year they were taking two 18u teams and was it one fifteen U team or two fifteen U teams? I can't remember. I believe it was one fifteen U teams, and uh, something about the eighteen U teams is you have basically like two levels, if that makes sense. So you have uh, Team Full Gorilla Dash Black, so to speak. So that's like you know their ones, and then Team Full Gorilla Dash Gray, and that's like you know their twos. But you know, depending on the day, guys can jump up and down between the teams and whatnot. Boom. So there you go. And, you know, you could probably estimate the numbers from there. Um, it's seven on seven. So just keep that in mind. And so if you were to make one of these teams, and I know we are getting the results right now in real time. I know um, Japri, our, our boy Japri, he just posted that he got into Team Full Gorilla um, a couple hours ago. And so we'll probably keep an eye on that moving forward. Yeah, I'll, I'll be scrolling Instagram as we're streaming for sure. Boom. There we go. Um, but if you do make one of these teams, you're con probably considered one of the best of the best in all of Colorado as far as football goes. And so, you know, a lot of kids came out and tried out, I want to say at least a couple hundred. I, I want to say 200 is probably a pretty safe, uh, number it might have been a little bit more than that and like i said it's from all over maybe, the state maybe around 250 even yeah yeah i know last year they were definitely in the 300 400 range and so that's how competitive this is and these athletes they come from everywhere i'm talking they come from as far north as severance colorado if you don't know what it is it's a small town so <laughs> there you go um and then as far south as you know pueblo there are a lot of pueblo boys there which is really yeah. interesting and you love to, cool see to see that Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so that's Team Full Gorilla. I figured I'd go ahead and give that intro. But let's go ahead and hop into kind of their setup here. And so the tryouts were over two days over at the Broncos training facility, by the way, in Dove Valley, which, not going to lie, is pretty nice. I've never been there before, Cody. So that was like, I don't know. <laughs> it was an experience. And so I could only imagine what it was like for the kids trying out there who haven't been there before either but now they're there for tryouts you know playing some of the best in the state i'm sure there were a lot of guys that had recognizable names out there as well that they've heard about either through you know social media or podcasts as well since we did cover a lot of colorado high school football these last two years and we'll continue to do so by the way that's not going to change and so uh with that being said uh the first day 
it, pretty much, I mean, it was pretty easy. It was just a straight combine day. Like, they're going to measure 40s, um, the shuttle times. I think they did set up an indie drill. They had a couple, like, positional, like, you know, workouts that they put them through because uh, Team Full Gorilla does have its own position coaches from, and these coaches are from all over the state as well, you know, the best of the best. And so, you know, they put them through that grind as well. And then, you know, kind of later in the day, uh, they had a little bit of competition, you know, nothing too crazy, but just running routes against each other, you know, letting quarterbacks go through progressions. And uh, they kind of got through combine stuff pretty, um, pretty quickly, honestly. They were like, shoot. So we started at 3, uh, 2.30, more or less. I mean, they got done around 4.35. So we had about an hour of all of that stuff. But I mean, they were done with it by the time that I got there. Yes. Because I showed up a little bit later in that first day, and they were already wrapped up. I kind of thought that the entire day was going to be combined from the way that we were kind of talking about it. Were they just, like, uh, kind of machining through it pretty fast and efficiently or what? Yeah, no, pretty much. I mean, me and Mason got there about 30 minutes before around 2.30. You know, I think that's when they actually opened up, like, the doors and whatnot and started letting people in. And so they were kind of, like, they were putting th them through a lot of warm-up stuff. And so I'm sure they probably got a jump. And then right after that, they just started, like, going at it, you know. Uh, we got to see a lot of 40s ran. Um, they had that set up. Laser time, by the way, not, not hand time. And so this is legit. You know, and so even if you don't make the team, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, having a laser 40 time on your profile or whatever as a recruit, that's big because coaches, you know, they see 40 times and they're like, oh, is it a laser or is it a hand? Oh, it's hand? Like, who cares, right? Like, I, sure, like, oh, whoops, I could slip on the clock, right? And so, so laser times are like, like, they're legit, right? They're the real deal. Um, They don't lie, you know, they don't honestly and you know coming into this you know me and a couple coaches talked mason and i you know we talked as well to uh, some parents and you know everyone wants to say they have a 4 4 40 4 3 40 but in reality there's only really a handful of those guys and um, i thought it was really funny but we did actually predict a couple of the players that would run um some of the fastest 40s getting those fastest times and so uh you love to see that but uh yeah that's basically that combine day um, I want to talk about athletes that stood out at the end. So, yeah. So Com we'll talk about. Go ahead. Do we want to talk about the combine winners at the end then? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about the combine winners at the end because they they also stood out during comp day. And sure, there was competition at the end of day one, but I mean, you know, like some people got more reps than others, and this and that and you know there weren't like there there was definitely a different group like i know Braden dorman he wasn't even there he showed up for the um, second day a lot of the og like team team full gorilla guys um you know they showed up for the next day i would say you know so there you go but that's called my day competition day it's where it really goes down you know obviously they split up by age group uh i believe there were only maybe a couple kids who moved up that were like, you know, 15, that would be in the 15U classification that moved up to the 18U and competed with them. But other than that, um, basically split up into their age groups, went over some quick warm up drills, whatnot, uh, all that great stuff. And then, you know, they uh, got into competition. And so we're talking about 1v1s. Uh, we're talking about like full drives, 50, like 50 and out, you know, so they start on the 50, then go towards the end zone those kind of deals and we do have a couple of those clips here and uh yeah i mean we got to see a lot of those <sighs> now i mean let's just talk about the athletes i mean uh, first off great I, I can't i can't like just talk enough about how great of an opportunity this is for the kids in colorado first off this thing is cheap compared to a lot of other like tryouts and like combine stuff and all that you know all that that uh, a bunch of other companies will charge you this is probably the cheapest there is i've talked to multiple parents you know i do have one parent here who said to him you know make sure to shout out team full gorilla for making this affordable for the kids man team full gorilla is a non-profit so none of the coaches make money off of this you know they just don't obviously there are fees so that they could travel and all that but for the most part you know this is as cheap as it gets they're not gonna scam you you know um they're not about like 
getting money from you and all that, right? The vibe very much at Team Full Gorilla is, hey, we here to compete. If you're a competitor, you'll stand out. You know, money ain't gonna mean much around here. Is uh, is basically how it goes, you know. And but that doesn't mean that they're not gonna provide the best for the kids, though. And so I just want to shout out Team Full Gorilla for really giving so many athletes a chance to, you know, measure. Like, just see where they stand against the best of the best here in the state, you know. Because there were some kids there that did play on the 2A level, on the 3A level. And, you know, like, honestly, in what universe are they ever going to play 4A or 5A players? You know, maybe one game. Maybe one. And so for them to play up against some of those guys and kind of show out, not only do they get on our radar, which is huge because we love to put on uh, small town kids, but, you know, they get it on the radar of coaching staffs, which is even more important because that's how you get scholarships. That's how you get to college for free, you know, um, off the scholarships, basically. And so... I just really wanted to emphasize how great of an opportunity this is. And for next year, if you're looking like to try out or whatnot, don't be afraid to. I mean, at the worst, you know, you don't make the team, but it's still a learning opportunity. You see where you stack up. You get a lot of like the numbers that coaches are looking for athletically, like 40 times shuttle times done so that you could post those and those are updated, you know, yearly and whatnot. And then you could send those out to coaches. That's a pretty big deal. You know, and so I really love what Team Full Gorilla does. I truly believe they are for the kids. You know, uh, shout out to the co-founders, Charles and John, man. They, they they some real ones. They invited us out back in September. I met John back in September at a Pine Creek Vista Ridge game, and we talked about it a ton, man. And I absolutely love what they're doing. You know, the kind of athletes that they've got to the next level. I'm talking Terrence Ferguson, four-star tight end. He balled out at Oregon this year, man. You have uh, some players at LSU. Luke McAllister, shout out to the homeboy. Uh, our number one rated uh, quarterback in the class of 2021, by the way, was a D1 type of guy. You know, is still a D1 type of guy. He, nothing changed there. You know, and then just all these other athletes. I mean, if you a real one, you get with Team Full Gorilla. That's all I got to say, you know, if you can. So, uh, so yeah, Cody, is there anything else you want to add on to that about Team Full Gorilla, their process or anything like that? Yeah, so actually I got to talk to Mason a little bit before this stream because he wasn't able to join us, but he was there for the full two days, like you said. And he just, this was his exact quote was, quote, that the environment was unmatched. They have some absolutely insane athletes. And that the competition aspect was my absolute favorite part. And I can't wait to see what they can do this year. And I think that the environment was really good. You know, I think that the coaches that Team Full Gorilla have are, you know, very competent guys who've played at the next level. You know, on one of those days, you had a former Miami Hurricanes quarterback, you know, coaching the quarterbacks. You have you know, a bunch of former D1 guys and even guys who are currently D1 right now coaching up these quarterbacks, coaching up these running backs, wide receivers, linebackers, you know, all of these positions so that, you know, Colorado football, even if you don't make the team, you're still getting the best coaching so you can run better routes so that you can throw a better pass so that you can make better reads. And, you know, they had that not only for, you know, the seniors and juniors, which is something that you're used to seeing, obviously, but they also had it for some of these younger guys and some of these eighth graders that are going to become freshmen. And so I thought that that was really refreshing, honestly, just being able to see the the coaching was elite at Team Full Gorilla. I think that's something that they pride themselves on is, you know, I mean, all of these guys are, are buds and they're all volunteers, you know, but it's a little bit different in the fact that you have coaches from a bunch of different schools and a bunch of different college programs that are coming to help including former players too like guys that we covered elijah graham was there shout out to elijah graham he was a top five safety in our class of 2021 he was up there coaching the defensive backs jackson brush who stay on the lookout for his upcoming interview along with his teammate but jackson brush was there coaching up wide receivers and helping them out and he was our number two receiver on our class of 22 episode so you know a lot of these guys uh, they obviously love the community at Team Full Gorilla, whether you're a coach or a former player, you know, because the former players, they're here on winter break from school usually, and they're like, hey, the timing for this is perfect. 
there is uh, this one cornerback who went to Eagle Crest. He graduated in class of 21. I got to talk to him. And he's like, yeah, my team full gorilla experience was awesome. And I'm back here from JUCO. So, you know, you have a bunch of guys on all different levels of football who all love the game coming here to coach these guys up. And the passion in the coaches is very obvious. You know, we got to catch, you know, the big the beginning kind of breakdown of what the day was going to look like and getting that intensity and that energy up. And we also got to see the ending breakdown of what that intensity and energy was going to look like, you know, for either the next day, if it was the breakdown for the first day or the second day where, you know, they were doing the awards and shouting out just everyone for coming out and trying. It was just really awesome to see and feel just, you know, a good combination of serious, helpful coaching but also positive and competent coaching at the same time. These guys know what they're doing. And, you know, even even the guys who didn't make the team, they are better after going to Team Full Gorilla tryouts because they're not there, you know, every rep. Obviously, they're keeping in mind who they're going to take for their travel team, but they're also like, hey, this is how you get better. So they're also kind of providing you you know, it's a tryout, but it's also like a coaching kind of two-day circuit, if that makes sense. Uh, Simon, I'm sure you can echo a lot of the same sentiment. But And I obviously agree with everything that you said, too, about just the overall vibe and stuff. And as Simon's showing on these clips right now, you know, they have all kinds of drills where they're throwing either one-on-one or they're having the quarterbacks throw three different routes at the same time so that these receivers can get work in at wide receiver on the defensive side of the field, you know, they're practicing their coverages and, you know, getting picks. Oh, nice pick. So, um, uh, Simon, do you have anything to add on after that? Nah, man. I mean, I, I just can't talk enough about how good it was com- competition-wise, man. I mean, they was getting after it. And I like what the coaches were saying, man. They're like, hey, you know. Uh, on Sunday, by the way, I, I forgot what coach it was. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. But one of the coaches was all like, hey, you know, we talking out here, man. We talking out here. Obviously, what we say stays up in here. And so I'm not going to repeat anything, obviously, that was being thrown around there. But like, you know, he said, we need some tough minded dudes out here because we go down south. Ooh. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, as someone from Dallas, man, that's all we do. We hit and we talk, and that's it. And if you can't handle it, then that's who you are as a football player, in our opinion. And so that's, I love it, you know. Uh, it, makes, it makes some young men into, or some boys into young men, you know. It makes some uh, uh, pretty big changes out here maturity-wise or not, because you can't just be running your mouth or even be giving looks. Like, there'd be some kids who are trying to get away with some sly looks, and then they go ahead and get embarrassed. Like, you can't, you got to be about that life when you come out here and play for Team Full Gorilla, man. And honestly, if you want Colorado to be a football state, you got to be tough mentally. Ain't no, like, oh, like I don't know. I'm kind of just out here like, nah, bro. Like, we run in every route 100%. We throw in every route 100%. If you're a defensive player, if you're a defensive player especially, got to be a dog. Because half the time you're on an island. So, <laughs> ain't no help. You know, your stats can't help you. Your stars can't help you. Your reputation can't help you. How you play on the field was the only thing that's going to help you. And that's facts, you know. And so uh, I just want to emphasize that because I think that's something that, you know, Colorado really needs to get an edge in, you know, getting that competition and just going at each other, man. Um, And obviously it's not personal. It's football. You know, we having fun. But you you just got to know, like, there's hundreds of kids here, you know, to stand out. You got to be a dog. If you're not, then you're not, you know, at least for now. And so, honestly, that's really all I got to say about that. (sighs) Let's go ahead and talk about the athletes who stood out. Cody, do you want to talk about the kids who won a couple awards? What some of these awards are as well um, and all that stuff. I know there was the fastest 40 time, uh, far longest, farthest, whatever, broad jump. You know, do you want to talk about that before we talk about you know, the kids who really stood out into, in, in comp and all that great stuff? Yeah, so for uh, 40 time, you had... Uh, I'm going to talk about the 15 new guys, and then I'll talk about the awards for the 18 new guys when we get there. But we're starting with some of these younger players. So on the 15 new side, the fastest 40 time was Kobe Dooley. This is a guy that, you know, Simon and Mason got to see a little bit more of, and I got to see in their playoff game, you know, for that 8th grade team. 
and uh, we we Ben knew that he's quick. And uh, you know the Dooley's, uh, all respect to Coach Dooley, obviously he's always very hospitable and very kind when he sees us. And uh, he's a busy man too. He's already in. Is he in Texas right now? I think already after doing these tryouts on Sunday, or no, or no, something like yet. that. No, yeah, he's um he's uh, coaching up those so-called all stars who will go to Texas. Yeah, uh, go to El Paso here in a couple months here. So yeah, um, but he's yeah he's pulling double time. I mean, obviously he's also a Vista Ridge's receiver coach, but uh, in the off season he works with TFG and then he is doing this thing with these so-called all stars as well. So yeah. Huge shout out so to him. He, That's my guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he's busy, but a uh, bunch of love to him. He's always super awesome to see and talk to and chat and whatnot. But, you know, um, he, we didn't get the times, I don't think. But Kobe Dooley, he runs the fastest 40-yard uh, dash out of 15U. Then for Shuttle, you had a, another upcoming Southern Colorado kid in Jaden Rin who won the shuttle time and he had himself a very good weekend. Uh, I, I don't know if we want to talk, stop to talk about these guys as we're kind of going through it, but I was very impressed with his speed. You know, it's not only in that shuttle, but it transfers very well to routes and on the field. That last quip was uh, Jaden were in there, I think. So. Uh, oh, was it really? Yeah, it was, and um, that's a uh, future quarterback, Cam Coop, who we'll also talk about here as well. Um, no, here, go ahead and finish up the awards, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about these guys. We'll start with the guys who won the awards and whatnot, and go from there, Cody. So yeah. Perfect. And so then in broad jump, you had the winner in fifteen was Xavier ne um, Nito. He's over there at Grandview right now now i believe Ooh, and uh yeah right now he is, we won't yeah, right, now he is. It, but right now he is yeah but uh he is you know he's a dynamic athlete as well and i'll touch up on him a little bit more and then as far as you know then they had like these highlight awards or something like that which basically went to like you know some of the best performers of the camp and whatnot and so for the 15 you on the defensive side Kobe Dooley, uh, he got another dub on that. And then for the offensive side is someone Simon just mentioned in Cam Cooper, Cameron Cooper, his full name, the uh, future of Pine Creek football, who had himself a pretty phenomenal weekend and threw some beautiful dimes in the process. And I think that this is a great time to start uh, kind of going through this list here, Simon, of some guys who impressed, kind of starting with, you know, these guys who did win these awards. We knew about all of these 15 new guys, but I also circled some other names that, you know, either impressed that we have covered or maybe some new faces that kind of made a name for themselves in, you know, this team full gorilla thing. But Cam Cooper, I mean, he's a playoff winning quarterback. Uh, simple enough, you know, already as yeah. a, you know, ascending sophomore. Uh, say which he's won a playoff. He's finished a playoff game and gotten a dub and advanced his team. There, there which, you go. That's accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm here, well, do do we all talk about him right now? I'm I'm good with talking about my uh, yeah, Colorado Springs. Absolutely. Boys. I mean, he gave us plenty of reasons to look forward to the future and know that he will be a full time starting playoff winning quarterback here in these next few years, because he has plenty of years of high school left, as, you know, obviously indicated by 15U. And, uh, you know, he was outperforming even some guys, I'd say, over on the 18U side who could drive. Um, yes. I think it was, honestly, uh, that throw down the middle of the field was probably my favorite Cam Coop throw of the weekend. It was just a dime that split, you know, the safeties. I believe that they were in a cover two look. And so he had a seam route and just gave it just enough air and just enough velocity. And it just landed so perfectly in the receiver's hands in the end zone. And it, that throw was at least, oh man, that was, a, it was a bomb to say the least. I feel like it, they were starting on the 40 going in. And You're so talking about the a, one to Jaden Rin, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the clip we showed a bit ago. Um, no, that has to be one of my favorites as well. I mean, look, first off, shout out to these 
Colorado Springs boys, man. Cam Coop, I've known this kid, I think maybe since he was in eighth grade, I want to say. And so I know he was the real deal. You know, he's come a long way, uh, mechanically speaking, you know, just working on his mechanics, having a little bit of a smoother throwing motion and really focusing as a, as more of a pocket passer because he's I would consider him a dual threat. Personally, he's somebody that could take the top off and could probably rush for 50 to 100 yards, uh, uh, you know, basically every high school football game. And so obviously, you know, it's seven on seven quarterback has to stay in the pocket. They can't just scramble out of nowhere. Right. And so Cam Coop, I mean, he really showed off his uh, pocket passing ability here, finding uh, his future teammate in Jaden Rin, who, by the way, uh, did play for that Raptors silver team. Shout out to coach. Uh, I want to say it's Donegan out there. You know, we got to see a lot of his games and uh, he was also a teammate of Kobe Dooley. They were both on the same team this last fall. And so obviously i knew what both of them could do going into this uh workout like honestly i was like oh there's probably no way they don't make the 15u team uh unless they just have a bad day which is possible you know but both of these guys both of those guys both kobe dooley and Jaden Wren, you know they really showed out you know not only in a competition but you know in the drills as well they was doing their thing you know and there's a reason why dooley did win that uh well both of those awards because, you know, he, he was balling out, you know, just doing his thing. And, you know, both of those guys, they're guys that are going to be threats on the next level here in Colorado soon, you know. Uh, hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> we just got some uh, a message in the chat. I appreciate that. But, yeah, no, both of those guys, they're going to be threats, you know. I mean, uh, what is it? Rin? Well, Rin and Dooley, they're both going to be freshmen next year. So they're both currently still in the eighth grade. And so they got four years left. I know Jaden Wren, he's probably, well, if if this if this tryout didn't make it obvious, he's probably going to Pine Creek because already he's showing great, like, chemistry with this future quarterback, Cameron Cooper, over there. And then Kobe Dooley, I mean, he has another TFG guy in, uh, in Braden Dorman, you know, who has been kind of the lead guy for TFG since uh, Luke McAllister left, uh, I want to say, last year because that's when he was a senior um look let, let's talk about Braden Dorman real quick man we don't have to talk about him a lot because we did interview the dude like last year and we like talk about him a ton whenever we get the chance but oh my goodness Cody this is the first time that you actually got to see him play live I got to see him play live against Pine Creek and then I did get to see his playoff game against Skyline so I know what Braden Dorman's all about he's a smooth pocket passer tall NFL size, you know, think Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, whoever, but with the smoother throwing motion and just a naturally strong arm. But seeing it live is different. So, Cody, you could talk about Braden Dorman a little bit here, but he showed why he's the real deal here in Colorado and why he's a four star and, you know, a top 10 quarterback in the country. Yeah, no. Um, Watching Dorman throw to the best in the state and realizing that one of his teammates is a part of the best in the state, was, it put other teams on notice there for sure. Um, he was he was doing his thing, honestly, and I think some of my favorite Brighton Dorman moments were, were the little things, you know, him talking to maybe some of these receivers who aren't as experienced or you know, don't have as much of like a passing game at their school or whatever, you know, he communicated and led them too. So I just think he's an awesome leader, really. And somebody who, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to call anything already, but uh, it makes part of our, you know, class of uh, 23 top fives, maybe a little bit easier. I'll say it like that. When you have a guy like Braden Dorman, throwing the way that he was and there's a reason that he was there for one day and they even limited him a little bit honestly on that day you know pulling him at times and drills because everyone Ben knew that he's that guy um and yeah like Simon said his throwing motion in live action is just so different and watching him throw with other quarterbacks because there are times where you know three quarterbacks were throwing to three different receivers during warm-ups and stuff like that there's just a difference you know, between him and and everyone else there, so. 
But uh, do we want to <laughs> hop back to uh, this uh, 15U kind of uh, convo? Yeah, let's let's keep talking about him. So, um, so shout out to the Colorado Springs boys. I mean, they're super talented, man. Vista Ridge, oh my God, Pine Creek. They, I mean, look, they're gonna be good these next couple of years. So at least they're gonna have talent that's gonna put on a show. But um, I want to mention this guy, man, because he had such a good throw. I mean, throughout the throughout the weekend, you know, he was. Loki really doing his thing out here, but I want to talk about the quarterback from Palmer Ridge, their young freshman quarterback, Ben Noblet, Benjamin Noblet. Um, you can find him on Twitter, Instagram. Go ahead and give him a follow. Dude is talented. I've known about him since, like, shoot, this last summer, I want to say. I know he did uh, go uh, do some working out with our boy Matt Segovia from TCA, you know, and um, he's someone who doesn't really stop working. You know, I love his work ethic. And, you know, going into this thing, I mean, there were definitely a couple Palmer Ridge guys. Palmer Ridge has a very strong connection with Team Full Gorilla. You know, obviously, uh, Luke McAllister was with them. Ty Evans, this is going way back. But in their first season ever, Ty Evans was one of their quarterbacks. Oh, he my played Lord. played for Palmer Ridge. And so, you know, Ben Noble, you know, having a little bit of a... Arguably, there's some pressure there, you know, like, hey, you're a Palmer Ridge quarterback, dude. Like, you got Ty Evans and Luke McAllister. Those are the last two quarterbacks. This year, I, I mean, I predicted this. I said, uh, you know, going into this season, I don't think Palmer Ridge is going to play a freshman at quarterback just because, I mean, if you have a guy waiting behind Luke McAllister, then what are you doing? He should be learning and getting better, right? And so I assumed they were going to play him, but... Um, you know, Ben Noble, I mean, he was, he's still in the wings. And I think after this tryout, man, it really showed why he should be in the conversation for that starting job moving forward. Now, he has to keep working, you know, and he has to keep, like, developing that relationship with his own receivers at Palmer Ridge. But, you know, one of my favorite plays from Ben was when, oh, my Lord. I, I Cody, I don't know who the receiver was because I really do want to give him credit. But... Ben, I mean, he was just looking downfield. He was probably around the 40 or 50, so this was going to be a deep bomb. And he just unleashes an absolute strike to the left hey. corner of the end zone, uh, between the corner and the safety, I want to say, as well. And it was an absolute dot for a touchdown. And that go got back me five, high. Go, go back on. five clips, and that was the one that was playing. I will, I will. Oh, here it is. I think it is right here, right? But let's watch this. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh man, I was. Whoa. I wanted to watch it again. Look at this Damn. throw. Touchdown. Baby. Oh my lord, a moon That's ball a on baby. film. I love that. I love that. You love to see him, man. Oh he's continuing lord, that to was get so smooth. Oh yeah, he's oh. continuing to get better, man. I mean, that's that's a that's a that's an absolute dog, man. I mean, he's. There, we, we, we will play that one more time, man. But he really stood out, not just for this ball. Like, he was, he had a nice little weekend, I would say, you know. He, did he was making thing. solid decisions anytime I was walking over there, you know. It wasn't all going for cutthroat, you know, deep bombs. There, there were times where he looked at the deep ball, and it wasn't there, and he took what the defense gave him, which is honestly the most promising thing you could do as a quarterback, even in, like, 7-on-7 seven seven especially, where... You want the big play constantly. I mean, it's just like a game in the fact that you always want the big play. And, you know, it, but seeing them take the time, find the open guy in this setting is really encouraging. And there were, there was some solid quarterback play on the 15U side, honestly. Uh, you know, on top of Ben Noblet, just going to take a quick moment to shout out uh, Nick Accardi, who had himself a pretty okay weekend, I think. You know, uh, over there on that side, he's out of Westminster. I think that was the Gators team, I think is what that Westminster team is called. Um, yeah, Westminster and, Gators. He'll be going to Mullen High School here soon. Yeah, and so, you know, he had himself some nice throws over the weekend. Then you had, I want to say Gavin Lockett as well. You know, he's a up-and-coming uh, Pueblo West guy who... You know, we've kind of had on our radar for a second. He was throwing some pretty nice balls himself this weekend, honestly, too. And it was pretty exciting to see. Is this him, actually? Okay. Oh, no. Was not well, that's bad fault. timing. Yeah. That's really can, bad timing. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but this is him. Uh, I well, mean, look, no one was perfect this weekend is something yeah, to keep in yeah. mind, too. It's and good competition, I, so, you know, just keep that in mind. But keep going. Well, I was also going to mention that uh, they... 
defensive coordinator of Team Full Gorilla said that this is like the most defensive guys they've ever had. And, you know, one of the more talented groups. And he predicted it. He's like, there's going to be like five interceptions during like competition on either side of the field because these guys are good. This is one of our best batches of defensive playmakers. And I think that that was very obvious. Uh, I'll touch up a little bit more on that on the 18U side, honestly. But, you know, just going again uh, through some of the quarterbacks here on the young side. There's some good up and coming talent. I know that, uh, you know, this is a class of 25 guy. He was competing on the 18U side, though, and that was Austin uh, Matarzewski out of Mountain Vista. He's also been on our radar. He is a playoff winning quarterback, somebody who, you know, didn't really get as many snaps as they might maybe should have during the regular season. But, uh, you know, he balled out over on the 18U side against you know, guys who will be competing nationally, I say. And I feel like he's almost a sure bet to make one of the teams here at Team Folk. Oh my lord, what a dot by Braden Dorman to DeAndre Horn. But, uh, you know, he, he had himself a pretty solid weekend, but he would technically be a uh, 15U guy at QB, but he was competing with, with the older guys because he's just like that. Uh, Simon, you want to jump in and add anything on... Um, Austin uh, Marzuski, who I think is an EPO guy as well. We need to get that confirmed. We'll see. <laughs> um, the, hey, first off, Nick, he's in the chat. A quick shout out to our homie here, man. I mean, um, no, he hey. impressed. You know, I have been literally looking at this dude's film for like two years, it feels. And I felt really bad that I could not make it out to a game this last season. And so to see this guy live finally, oh my lord. It was like a relief. I, like, first off, the film doesn't lie. So he's real in person as well. And so he looked real good, man. I mean, doing his thing out there. I just got to give him a lot of credit um, because I, I could only imagine how many teammates will be making that trip out to Denver. I mean, it's not super far, so maybe it wasn't that many um, or it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, big shout out to him. I mean, he'll be uh, over at Mullins soon here, like I said. And so that's uh, that's one to look out for. Uh, Majerzewski. Newcomer of the year finalist for 5A levels. Uh, you could go ahead and vote on our polls on Twitter at Playmakers Corner. Check that out if you haven't yet. But, golly, man. I mean, the more I watch uh, Majuszewski play, the more he reminds me a little bit of a young McAllister. You know, of a young Luke McAllister over at Palmer Ridge. Their throwing motion is pretty similar. He has a little bit of a windup in his throw here. My bad. I didn't mean to get away my mic. But he has a little bit of a windup in his throwing motion, which, you know, some people could say is elongated. But if his timing is right, oh my lord, he could fit it into some tough spots. And, you know, seeing him, like, kind of develop through this last season, his freshman year was, a, was really fun, honestly. And I really thought that Mountain Vista probably should have given him, you know, the... The keys to the car a little bit early if he crashes it it's fine it's his freshman year you have three more years with the car right so <laughs> like who cares right um but they still made the playoffs and he won a playoff game and in that playoff game he went crazy and you know a lot of that definitely transferred over here he even got better i would say because he just showed that like i mean as far as pure talent arm or uh sorry as far as arm talent goes he's up there like he is that dude and so, huge shout-out to Austin Matrzewski, man. I mean, really just doing his thing out there. Um, before we do move on to kind of like the, uh, you know, the older levels here, I know I am playing a lot of breeding Dorman clips, but, you know, I mean, he just he made a lot of plays, so what do you want me to do? But um, I do want to shout-out, you know, some of the younger kids that were out there as well. Cash Williams from the Parker Hawks, he is actually a 7th grader. I know this because the eighth grade quarterback for the Parker Hawks is Michael Marcinich, and he will be moving on to probably legend. I mean, you know, we'll see. Um, but, you know, big shout out to him. You know, he, he's probably one of the youngest guys there, and he was doing his thing, you know. So, uh, you know, you love to see that. And then I also want to shout out Ponderosa quarterback and newcomer of the year finalist, Andrew Heidel, man. Okay, look, I'm going to, I'm not even going to cap. Because you could go ahead and find, you know, like me saying it myself. But I was definitely a little, like, like I don't know. I was kind of in between when it came to, um, look, uh, Andrew Heidel here. Yeah, just because 
the one game I watched him play in, it, first off, it was a homecoming game, so maybe there's a lot of pressure there uh, against a Vista Peak. He did get benched at halftime. Maybe it was because they already had the lead or whatever. Whatever, he still got benched. Even then, when he was in the game, he didn't exactly look comfortable, I would say. Then, when Mason saw him play against Palmer Ridge, they did amass that 21-point lead over them before you know, Palmer Ridge came back and had one of the greatest comebacks in, in, in this last season here. But, uh, um, you know, he still played well. And I think this tryout, personally for me, really helped me out. I kind of buy into the whole Heidel situation. I was able to look through his film. You know, there are definitely a lot better games. And, you know, that's just how freshman quarterbacks go. It's up and down. You know, one day they'll be great. Next week, you know, they look like they're a freshman. And it's obvious right? Uh, more obvious than ever when they're throwing picks and fumbling and not knowing what the play is and all that great stuff. And so for him to come out here and really compete, because uh, I think he was actually grouped with the 18U athletes. Is that right, Cody? Yes, it was. Okay. You were muted, by the way. But <laughs> yes. Okay. There you go. Well, that's huge because he threw some dots out there. Not only just showing off his arm strength, but with great timing. And in seven on seven, if you are a quarterback, you need to have good timing. It doesn't, like, if you just have a strong arm, that, uh, I mean, that's not going to exactly cut it, you know, because, uh, I mean, anybody could have a strong arm, but linemen could have strong arms. Doesn't mean they should play quarterback, you know, and so that timing definitely separates some guys. And I think Heidel, he's obviously been working on that. And, uh, you know, it showed. In these tryouts so i do want to give him a big shout out man because i think he really made a case for himself this weekend uh just doing his thing man and so super proud of him i think ponderosa they got a quarterback you know these next couple years i was kind of surprised um that i didn't see his boy max mervin over there the his uh fellow freshman receiver at least i didn't see him on the list cody did am i right there i'm i'm looking at the list right now i didn't I see him on the list okay so that's that's a shame because that would have been really cool to see as well. Yeah, no Mervin. <sighs> yeah, but um, before we do move on to 18U, there's one more name I want to throw out here. Uh, well, two more names. Zane Ito did his thing. I know maybe he was working with some of the 18U guys, but as far as 15U goes, I mean, he plays for Grandview. Uh, we've been known about Zay. Uh, he's, he's the real deal. So, boom, there you go. And then MJ Hayes, another Grandview guy, arguably one of the more impressive cornerbacks here uh, in this weekend. You know, he really did his thing now. There were a couple clips I showed where he was, you know, kind of getting worked here and there. But that was against older competition for sure. So you got to throw that out there. And then I, I think just in general, I mean, he did make some really good plays, had some good turnovers, you know, good ball skills. And I think Grandview, I mean, they're always strong defensively. Uh, they are losing Caden Rulo, another TFG guy, Team Full Gorilla guy. But, you know, you get a guy in uh, MJ Hayes who's kind of sitting around here ready for his time to come. And I think he actually did get varsity snaps in the playoffs. But that is somebody you got to look out for, man. Really impressed. Super smooth hips. Oh, my Lord. You know, like he could he could get down with the best of them. And so I think that's going to be a name that we're going to be talking about soon here. And then last but not least, Japri Jennings. We shouted him out earlier on here um only came for the second day you know and uh, japri i mean we've been known about him he was a star with the junior buffs this last year doing his thing uh, obviously he did get hurt but he came back and was still pretty good and then even then here i mean he was a 15 you guy an eighth grader uh, about to go into his freshman year at uh i don't know we, we don't know what high school but you know he did his thing here played with the big dogs and uh the big dogs as in the 18 u varsity starters um well all of them are varsity starters i would assume and you know he did his thing and so huge shout out to him and okay i am so sorry cody i feel like i just keep going on and on but one more receiver i got a shout out is jeremiah hoffman the receiver out of severance cody you did get to see a lot of his game um more than i did but do you want to talk about him a little bit more here because he, I mean, look, he's kind of a big body receiver that can move really well. And Sevens, they are a two-way team. And not only are they a two-way team, but they're a defensive team, I would say. Like, they got linebackers, safeties, corners, defensive linemen who are probably going to contend on our top five list coming soon here. Um, but 
you know, they're not really an offensive team, I would say. You know, they have athletes who could play the offensive side, but, you know, to see this kid, uh, Hoffman, come out here and really do his thing against 5A and 4A talent, I don't know, man. It kind of feels like he's going to be uh, the next Tucker Peterson of sorts. But, uh, Cody, what do you think about that? You know, I think that that's a fair comparison. You know, he was something that we don't get to really talk about in this TFG 7-on-7 seven seven setting is he was really physical. And, you know, he kind of banged in the middle there a little bit, you know, catching some passes where, you know, there were some collisions and whatnot. And he held on to the ball and showed, hey, you know, I'm, I'm corn-fed, man. Like, you can't push me around just because you go to a big school, okay? Like, I'm not... You know, and I think it was a great showcase too that, you know, there there were some 2A guys, even a 1A quarterback, a couple of 1A quarterbacks actually over the weekend, you know, a guy from Aspen and then uh, Levi Paxson from Florence, you know, who, you know, took some warming up and getting used to, but I feel like, you know, once they, once they kind of get into a rhythm and get established, they show that, yeah, I can throw on 5A talent. I can catch on 4A talent. I can shut down 5A receivers as a 3A guy or a 2A guy because it's true. If you're an athlete, then you're an athlete. And if you're well coached, then you're well coached. And there's good coaches and there's good athletes sprinkled through all of Colorado. So, you know, this whole, uh, he only plays 3A, he only plays 2A. How could you put him up this high? You know, I think it's... Uh, we... Uh-oh, that is not good. Um, hey, Cody, are you there? Hello? Hey, what's up? You good, bud? I don't know why it turned off my camera. Discord <laughs> said no more. It, like, that was rude. It took you out of the whole call. But uh, keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah, anyways, as I was saying, you know, um, man, that really ruined my rhythm. Thanks a lot, Discord. This is all about improv. But anyways, you know, there were some athletes on that 15U side that I think showed a lot of promise honestly as far as you know excellent route running out of you know these younger guys and some creative route running too so i'm just going to go through this list real quick shout out to uh jacob borland uh, he was wearing bib 111 he ran some crazy routes over the weekend he did you know have a drop or two which is all right you know but the the routes that he was showing me was you know i think that you can kind of look at Jerry Judy a little bit as a comparison. As like, if you can do the routes and if you have the footwork, then you can figure out the catching. You know, then that's just catching a football and catching a tennis ball over and over again. You can fix hands. Routes, those are a little bit harder to teach. Those are a little bit harder to coach. And, you know, he is a class of 26 guy, so he's an incoming freshman. And he was running better routes than a lot of the 18 you guys at tryouts. I have no problem saying that. There is one play where... It, Simon, this is actually, you know who this guy is because I came over to you and I was like, dang it, he had that defensive back because it was like he ran that go, then he stopped like he was going to do a stop and go, then ran back, ran forward two more steps, and then did a comeback, and the defensive back was all spun around. He looked lost. He needed a map to find Jacob Borland, and then Borland just didn't finish the catch, but I mean, the route was, oh, bonita. It was perfect, and it was a good route, so shout out to him. And, uh, you know, talking about some of these other younger guys here, just kind of going through my list. As far as guys that I start or circled, like you said, Andrew Heidel, he was somebody who impressed competing against those 18 U guys, just like he competed against full varsity squads, you know, for his 4A Ponderosa team that, you know, overperformed from what we expected. And a huge part of that came from Heidel and, you know, that receiving core and you know even won a playoff game so shout out to ponderosa they proved us wrong a little bit there because we didn't choose him in the playoffs and didn't choose him to make the playoffs but you know andrew heidel he's making sure that they're overperforming there on our expectations and that they're gonna stick around for the next three years so shout out to him obviously uh brandon kari care uh brandon care was a guy from a spartans gold team he was a defensive back number 157 who was having himself a pretty solid day on that Saturday. So he was somebody who I wanted to shout out here. Uh, Landon Callsbeck, you know, it says he's a class of 26 guy. 
He was another defensive guy who I thought was pretty impressive. I think he was repping, oh, you know, kind of a press. Wait, Simon, were you going to say something? Oh, sorry. I just said he's from, he's going to be a Dakota Ridge, but he's a Dakota Ridge guy. Go ahead, though. Yeah, he's a Dakota Ridge guy, and he was somebody who also, I think, played pretty physical, too, you know, at these tryouts. So, oh, yeah, because you and Mason got to watch him, and he came up after the tryouts to us, I believe, right? Yeah, so th that was that was a lot of meeting, which thank you, everyone, for coming up and introducing yourselves as well uh, as we continue to go through this recap. But anyways, you know, uh, he had himself a solid weekend. Gavin Lockett, you know, we unfortunately pulled up a rough clip of him, but he showed a lot of solid mechanics, I think, over the weekend, and he did have some dots as well. You know, maybe didn't get to flex off like a ton of arm strength throughout the weekend, but he did hit some in routes, I think, that were impressive timing-wise and whatnot, and I thought his mechanics looked pretty solid as well. And, you know, also out of Pueblo West, there is a Garrett O'Brien, 187. He was a wide receiver, and he was cooking on uh, that 15U side. I think that he's going to be, you know, that gives Gavin Lockett a great target to kind of progress with and move up with as well. So, you know, that's something else to be excited about for Pueblo West. And Pueblo West, you know, they're typically a team that I'd say runs the ball a little bit more. But I think that they could really open it up through the air these next few years with guys like, you know, uh, Garrett O'Brien and Gavin Lockett. Looking through the list, uh, Maxwell Lovett out of uh, Longmont, you know, he had himself some solid plays at wide receiver. Uh, DJ Mills, he's a youth guy, class of 26. He was wearing like these green sweatpants, bib 177. He showed some wheels on some go routes and just straight up lost some of these defenders. So, you know, that was super sweet to see. And, uh, you know, he did get... He did struggle a little bit during, you know, some press coverages and whatnot, getting off of press. But, you know, I just say to uh, to our guy, DJ Mills, just go hit that weight room and, you know, work on those releases. Look at some of these other TFG guys and uh, you'll get your chance. You'll get your chance. Uh, you already shouted out Zay, obviously. Continuing. Oh, yeah. Chase a real out of Banning Lewis prep. He was kind of a big body there you know, at that, on that 15U side, but he moved pretty well. He did have some drops, you know, got to shout out the, the bad with the good, but just his overall size and speed and physicality as like maybe a tight end. I think Banning Lewis prep could exploit a lot of mismatches with a tight end, like Chase Real on that, on that level of football. So, you know, he had himself a solid weekend. Obviously, Jaden Wren, absolute speed demon like simon said for that raptors team and heading up into pine creek then there is this one player jared runnels who you know signed up as a quarterback he's uh well shoot i guess that wouldn't be 15 he was on the 15 u side so he's probably a younger guy but he's a class of 24 on the younger side i should say and uh you know he was listed as a quarterback but i think he could make a very good switch to wide receiver he ran some solid routes there was a corner route that I thought was really impressive. I think a corner route is kind of a hard route to run, especially on sevens, you know, making sure that you're in the right position, utilizing the field correctly, making your cut at the right spot, selling that kind of inside release to the DB. But he did all those things, and he's typically a quarterback. So I have a lot of hope for him and, you know, just a couple of solid athletes, I think, out of Northfield. Oh, man, get that ball to him. And um, let's see, uh, Makai Saburin. He's a class of 26 guy who also made a couple of plays. And, oh, Tyson Thom, I want to say, or Tome. He is a Cherry Creek youth guy who I think showed some good size. And he's a linebacker, actually, for, you know, or at least he repped linebacker at TFG. And I think that he could be a solid TFG linebacker. He was pretty physical and showed good lateral quickness in, you know, the seven on seven settings, which is, you know, overall very uh what, what's what i'm looking for it's what you need out of a linebacker you know especially in a seven on seven setting but just in general it's a very transferable skill and the better you are at pass coverage as a linebacker the more you stay on the field because the game is changing and teams are passing so you got to be able to play the pass as well as the run at linebacker all right simon my ramble is 
is over as far as shouting out all the players that I had to circle and star on top of all the guys that we talked about, you know, earlier in this segment. But, you know, unless you have anything else to say, I think it's a good time to talk about our 18 you guys here. Hey, wait, quick, quick shout out to our boys, uh, Tanner Tezdal and uh, Juice Savaloya, man. Um, they came out to play. I think they probably didn't get as many targets as I personally would have hoped. Uh, but, you know, I'm biased. But, you know, they did their thing. Uh, Juice, especially. He got a couple quarters on a couple routes, you know. Good thing they didn't look his way because uh, they would have been embarrassed there. But he did get a – oh, my God, I can't talk. His route running was really good is what I'm trying to say here. So, big shout-out to him. Tanner, uh, he did get some snaps, I think, on offense and defense, I want to say, as well. But, uh, I mean, like Juice, he wasn't getting thrown the ball a ton. But some good his routes His defensive there. showing was – uh, a little bit better than his offensive showing Tanner's, that is. Yeah, I would say, so. I mean, that makes sense. He's a really good safety as well. And so, uh, just, I mean, I had to plug those guys. We have, <laughs> there's a lot of guys that we had to talk about with 15U. But there's also some guys with 18U as well. So, we, we could definitely transition into that. I mean, look, I think, personally, I, I'm just going to start this off and then I'll throw it back to you, Cody. Then we'll just go back and forth. How does that sound? But, uh personally man i would have to say a dude that i really loved just seeing out there man like pl do playing his game like just uh, showing off his skills was uh oh my gosh um, it's uh ishmael cc right for cherry creek the junior wide receiver he did get offers from usc a bunch of pac-12 schools all that stuff that dude's a dog now i saw his playoff film so I, we've been new this you know um, by the way, I think his Instagram handle is I see the icon. So go ahead and check him out. Give him a follow because that dude is an absolute beast. Watching him go to work in one on ones, uh, scrimmages, whatever. He's different. It's a thing of beauty. That boy is an artist at work when doing his thing. I'm very happy with saying that because he is hard to guard one on one, man. Just the level of detail. He puts in his route running from the beginning of his route uh, to the end of his route is absolutely insane. You know, he does a lot of little things that if, I mean, if you're a DB, if you're a cornerback watching that, it's going to trip you up, you know, because it's giving you a bunch of different signals. Just the way he runs his routes, man. He is something special. Definitely, you know, kind of a guy that has emerged as a contender for our number one receiver spot next year on our top five seniors list. But there are also a bunch of other receivers that will contend on that list that were here as well. Um, but Cody, what, what was another guy, 18U guy, that you wanted to talk about um, that really stood out to you? Well, I mean, just just to reiterate, uh, CC was uncoverable at this camp. And that's saying something because there are a lot of great DBs. And until he was basically bracketed in coverage there, he was open on every play. Um, but, you know, one of the guys who was impressive and was an award winner, you know, is uh, Tyson Clark out of Eagle Crest. And Eagle Crest is looking to be a pretty solid secondary here. But, you know, he was the fastest guy. He won the 40-yard dash on the 18U side. And he also had himself a couple of picks. On Sunday especially, you know, there is one in particular where, you know, I think uh, his quarterback was going for a corner route. And so, you know, Tyson, he was kind of buzzing the flats. But I think he baited the quarterback, honestly, because, you know, the corner route, I could see what the quarterback was looking for. But you can't throw that on. Oh, there's that clip of Mason's big head in the way. That's hilarious. But you can't get you can't test Tyson like that because he just drops back in coverage so fast you know obviously being the fastest guy there at least in a straight line he drops back so fast it makes an incredibly athletic grab it was one of multiple interceptions he had all weekend and you know between him and his teammate uh, diego cerns you know both eagle crest guys diego being you know a corner but also a safety kind of guy showing off some versatility who also had multiple interceptions in competition and in sevens that Eagle Crest secondary is going to be hard to throw on this year. And uh, quarterbacks, it'd be, you're in for a treat, especially those Centennial League guys. Because, man, Diego and uh, Tyson, they're, they're the real deal, for sure. I could tell this was the point where Coach said, <laughs> people going to talk and all that. 
But um, no, absolutely. I definitely have to agree with you. Uh, Tyson Clark, me and uh, Mason looked over in time to see his uh, 40 time. And golly, that boy was, he was speeding through it, you know, and we saw that for sure. And so Tyson Clark, he's definitely someone to look out for. I mean, um, this team full gorilla team, when you really look at it uh, and how many seniors are graduating, they're graduating a lot of defensive players. Curtis Jackson, you know, dog. Uh, Jaden Allen. Another certified dog. Dante Capolongo, another dude who gets it done as a receiver and as a corner because he's just that athletic. You know, like there's just so many guys that they are losing and so forth. Tyson Kaden Clark Rulo. to And who? Caden oh, Rulo. Yeah, Caden Rulo. Oh my god. There you our, go. our basically our top five corners list entirely. <laughs> our yeah. TFG guys. Minus Braden Keith, I think. But uh yeah, basically, I mean like uh, they're replacing. They're gonna have to replace a lot of defensive guys. And so for Tyson Clark to really come out and show out, you know, I um, mean, he was always out there, and so that's definitely a dude to look out for. Not only for, you know, this off season, but um, going into the next season as well. Now, Cody, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick it up with another guy that really impressed here, and actually, he's in this picture right here, and that is Blake Palladino, man, uh, from Mullen. He is he was their starting quarterback. We will get a film breakdown of this dude done soon. Um, we have seen someone else do his film breakdown, which not going to lie, hurt a little bit, but that's okay. You know, we'll still get to it. We have kept our eyes on him for a minute now. I know he was on our list last year, like before this season, so it's been about a year now. Um, a little bit over a year now that he's been on our list and has been rocking with, with us. But Blake, man, I mean, first off, dude's an absolute athlete. He could run with the ball. We do, we knew that, you know, going into this. But seeing him live here, man, I mean, he showed off that he just has an extremely strong arm. You know, there are a couple clips of back. I mean, I don't know if you noticed uh, with what he was wearing and whatnot and, you know, his hair and all that. But um, there are a couple clips back where, like, he was throwing dots, like, in the end zone. You know, and uh, I mean, when you have the arm talent that he does, he's just able to do that. I think with him, uh, honestly, my biggest concern with him always moving forward was like just the timing. And I think going into this uh, weekend, that was something that I was personally looking for. Like, OK, you know, Blake, I know you could I know you could throw it. That's obvious. But let's see how good you are with timing routes, with putting together a drive, because that's what matters. You know, and then when you get into the end zone, that should be an automatic seven. You know that. You know, but to get there is a journey itself. And so um, I was really happy to see some of the progression from Blake Palladino here, man. I mean, um, well, they got two guys over there. Nick Accardi, he will be coming up. He will be a freshman next year. Blake will be a junior next year, right, yeah. Cody? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's spaced out pretty pretty good if you ask me and so really like Blake Palladino's game man I think he's somebody that we definitely have to keep our eyes on uh, going into next year so uh, yeah but Cody what do you think about Blake and uh, uh, what's another guy that stood out to you Blake man oh he he was one half of probably the best play I saw all weekend where he threw this post to uh, this guy out of Doherty we actually won like the the 18 u highlight reel award and that was um solomon latimer where you know he just threw the ball where like you know solomon could make he knew his receivers is a great way to to put it and to be able to do that with a bunch of guys who you probably just met one day and then to show a rhythm with them the next is absurd so you know, I think he's very acute to understanding what receivers' capabilities are, kind of what their games are, and then giving them balls that they can catch. You know, if there is a jump ball guy, like Paladino, yeah, I'll give you a jump ball that you're going to win. If there is, you know, a quick guy, he's like, oh, I'm going to get you the ball in space. You know, so he understood his receivers very well this weekend. And, you know, he was overall just very impressive. And, you know, I think he's going to be a part of, you know, a resurgence of sorts for Mullen. And so, talking about some other guys who did impress, there is one also in this picture, and he did win the shuttle as a quarterback for 18U, and that is Giselle Riley. There's there's two guys that we're going to be talking about in this frame, actually. But, you know, Giselle Riley, 
He was one of our, you know, offensive playmaker of the year award candidates. He is, you know, Mason, Mason's favorite player in the entire state of Colorado is Giselle Riley. Mason hyped him up for us. And then, you know, I got to watch some of his film looking at offensive playmaker and then watching him here, you know, I think that he had a very, very solid day one performance. And, you know, is it, it he's, he's a highly touted prospect. He's an FSU recruit. You know, he was invited to CU's junior day and he's just super athletic. And we, we knew that, you know, he was a huge running part for this offense, but what could he do with his arm? And man, he showed out a little bit on that Saturday. Mostly, I think is where I saw most of him uh, performing very well, especially just with timing. And it was really impressive to kind of talk to him and be like, Hey, how'd you feel, you know, about your performance on Saturday? And he said, you know, uh, I got off to a slow start, you know, I think. And, but I think it all came together and I'm really excited to get after it tomorrow. But Mason, Simon and I kind of looked at each other like slow. That's what a slow start looks like for Giselle Riley. And uh, Simon, I, I don't mean to speak for you, but it was definitely, you know, like it, it was a good reflection on his character and his work ethic and his drive, honestly. And uh, he's a good kid and an even better quarterback. Yeah, no, absolutely. Giselle Riley, man, is special. I'm actually going to go back in these clips and try to find the one, because uh, I know it's near the end here, where he threw an absolute dot. Oh, here we go. See, look at that. Look at that timing. It might have been this Good one. Good job, Simon. Let me, you know, let's let's just watch this. Um, that was a bad timing there. That receiver probably could have caught it. That was really good defense. But Giselle Riley, man, I mean, look, I could tell, like, after that first day, I mean, I you got to keep in mind, man, Giselle Riley, he doesn't exactly have um, a ton of great receivers over at Golden right now. His best one was a senior, so he wasn't at these tryouts, man. But I think the only other guy from Golden was his running back, and so... That's pretty lonely. I'm not going to lie. And so going to this tryouts, man, and, you know, there's hundreds of other kids. I'm not going to lie. I had to, like, kind of take myself away from where I was positionally and be like, look, if I was in these kids' shoes, how would I feel if I was basically on my own? I don't got my boys with me. So it's me against the world is how it feels. And I'm sure that's a must of – and that, that might have – uh, how, what am I trying to say? That, that's maybe how uh, Giselle Riley might have felt because I would even say going into these tryouts, you know, maybe a lot of people see him more as an outsider. His junior year was his first year starting after taking a year off uh, transferring from Bear Creek, which, oh my God, what a loss. You know, what a loss. Because Giselle Riley is that dude. He could have made them into state contenders. Honestly, I mean, right, Golden it was a state contender low-key last year, and nobody saw that coming, you know. And so for Giselle Riley to come out here and continue to kind of bring on that attitude, you love to see that. And he's just such a nice dude, man, real humble guy. And uh, once he got going, you know, he threw some dots, including this nice fade route here, which I'm going to play, and we'll react in, uh, in real time. Well, so real time secondary. Well, yeah, but oh, look at that, man. Look at that. Oh, my just what Lord. What a good throw, man. And he knew he wanted it, too. He just wanted that <sighs> timing, put it up there. If there's a defender there, he would have been mossed anyways because that timing and that placement is elite, you know. And honestly, I, I mean, I'm just going to say this as well, you know. Uh, Border kind of gave Giselle Riley a really late junior day invite, if you know what I'm saying here. And so... uh that's all I'm going to say, you know, about that. But Giselle Riley, man, he is a dog. You know, we know he could run as well. But as far as throwing the ball goes, he's a smooth passer. You know, once he gets into rhythm, like, he can be lethal. You know, I did watch him against Fountain for Carson. And, look, playing against Jaden Allen, Curtis Jackson, Lawrence Walker, that sucks. That's never a good thing. Braden Dorman struggled against them. Luke McAllister struggled against them, even though he did beat them, though. Just throwing that out there. But, you know, for Giselle Riley to go out there uh, with minimum turnovers, I think you only had one, which was insane because literally Curtis Jackson just broke on a hitch route and returned it, and that doesn't happen every day. But, you know, Giselle Riley, you know, he's somebody to look out for, and I think watching him at tryouts further affirms that. I think going into next year, it will be a battle 
for that number one quarterback spot between Braden Dorman and Giselle Riley. Right now, I would still give Dorman, you know, the edge, obviously. I think he has a little bit more poise to him. He throws with a little bit more timing. But, of course, he has been with Team Full Gorilla longer. I think with Giselle Riley, um, I mean, it's going to be different, dude. I mean, uh, he's going to have another year. He's going to have another year here moving forward. And, uh, I mean, there's going to be a lot of growing for sure. And I think if he does get picked up by T Team Full Gorilla, that will be such a steal. And I did overhear some of the coaches. They were very impressed with Giselle Riley. One of them did say – at least according to Mason, uh, this is what Mason told me. But one of them did say, where has Giselle Riley been my whole life? <laughs> there you go. But uh, <laughs> that's, what, that's how Mason feels too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what, what a great kid. And just what a what a baller, honestly. So, um, so yeah. But uh, Cody, you mind if I point out another great quarterback here? Yep. Yep. I know. I, I know exactly what you're going to talk about. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. It's that Grandview quarterback, Liam Zarka. He's a sophomore this year. Will be a junior next year. Uh, look, dude has a can. We've been on this, but seeing it live, it's just different, you know. And his timing has greatly improved, I would say. Um, well, obviously, since the beginning of his uh, sophomore season until now. And I was very impressed. Like, he was throwing dots out here, dude. Like, he was getting after it. Um, and I did make this comparison while talking to Cody and Mason, just watching him though, because he did get a lot of reps. I'm not even going to lie. He was out there a ton. But he looks like a young Matthew Stafford. I'm going to be real. You know, maybe it's the hair or maybe it's like the blue that goes with it. And it's just like, oh, that's Matt Stafford. But like, he looks like a young Matt Stafford, man. Just real it's comfortable. It's post route. It's very Stafford esque. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You know, he. Oh boy, he's going to be a problem next year. Whether he makes CFG or not, I think he's somebody who should definitely probably be on the roster, I would say. But, you know, Liam Zarka, like, he was out here, like, just throwing, like, bullets straight up, you know. And he was, like, timing was great. Ball placement was great. I think he's somebody that, you know, is going to continue to develop, to develop year after year. And I'm just really excited to see where he's going to be at. Honestly, man, because I think, uh, oh my God, I think he's just great. And I think Liam Zarka is just great. And I was extremely impressed by what I saw here. Um, just play by play. You know, every play, it seemed like he was impressive. Cody, what do you think about that? I mean, Liam Zarka let his name be known with a legendary game-winning drive to open up the season and open up his starting career for a varsity football squad this year against Pomona in the very first week. That's when you're like, oh, hey, Liam Zarka, this is a guy to know. And he took that Grandview team to the semifinals. You know, they were a top four team. And I think a huge part of that, obviously, you know, they had a lot of dogs on defense. They had that running back, uh, Musa Al Safar, who was a dog. But, you know, Liam Zarka was a huge part of that equation. And I knew that he was athletic. I knew that he could run and that he had a big arm. But, you know, his timing, like you said, obviously dramatically improved. And, oh, my God. And he was doing it against the best. I mean, God, the post that he threw from, like, the 50-yard line. Holy. Whoa. Oh, I have to censor myself because it was so good. It was so clean. But, I mean, he just, he was so impressive this weekend. And his cannon of an arm is going to be something that I'm very excited to watch these next two years, honestly, at Grandview. And, you know, I think that he helps make Grandview somewhat of a contender. That was a sweet catch. That's uh, Loomis, by the way. You know, don't mean to uh, interrupt that, but uh, Landon Loomis, he's a Horizon guy who's a senior this year, and I think he's a continuing TFG guy. He also had an impressive weekend. Not only did you have catches like that, but he was mossing people, and his route running is exquisite. So Landon Loomis, that's somebody to look out. I don't think he's related to Ian Loomis in any way. Uh, but uh, Loomis no. must just be a football player kind of breed, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, no, Landon Loomis is definitely somebody to look out for. Um, shoot, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. Uh, Rosenmeyer, I think it's Will Rosenmeyer as well. We, well, I, Cody, I don't know if you met him, but me and Mason met him at a AYL playoff game, actually. I think he was at DJ Bordeaux's. AYL playoff game, if I do say so. But, um, you know, he impressed. He is a returning DB, you know, and so he's one of the guys that they're looking at to make the next step forward. And golly, is this dude, like, just, oh, he's a lockdown corner, just super long, bro. 
Like, that's all I got to say. Pause. But just super long. Like, the reach, you know, the press. Like, he is difficult to get separation against because he's going to rough you up at the line and then just, like, you know, just get at you, like, throughout your entire route. Just one of those annoying corners that you would hate going against. And it doesn't help that this dude is at least 6'1", 6'2", something like that. And, or at least he plays like it because it's really annoying. But uh, Rosemeyer is definitely somebody to look out for. Um, and a returning team for Gorilla Guy. So, yeah. Uh, Cody, I don't know if you got to see uh, Rosemeyer play a ton. But uh, um, I know they kind of, you know, they, they played him early on. And then they might have, uh, like, chilled out on his reps. But uh, what do you think about him? You're muted, by the way. All right, well, Cody is figuring that out. So that is okay. Um, okay, are you good? Yep, I got it all squared away. But uh, I, I don't know if this is the right transition, but Will Rosemeyer being a Rock Canyon guy, I think is a great time to shout out DeAndre Horn, who is a returning TFG guy, class of 2023 guy. And man, he had some sweet catches this weekend. And he was one of those guys that you could tell these quarterbacks, you know, who are throwing to a lot of receivers that aren't necessarily their own. He was a guy that a lot of quarterbacks were like, damn, I wish I could throw to this guy every week because he is such a mismatch physically. He's He's huge, dude, and he's fast. He's, <laughs> for any defender, he's definitely a nightmare to try and keep up with. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, I'd have to agree. DeAndre Horn stood out right away. That dude is probably 6'3", right? 6'3", 6'4", definitely at least 220 pounds because that boy is ripped. Oh, my God. You know, it's easy throwing to him, but he is somebody to look out for. I had a nice couple last games um, this last season, and you know, so I knew about him going in. But seeing him live, man, oh, I mean, if they could get it going over there in Rock Canyon one more time, I think he could have a very good season. Just a very raw athlete out there. So huge shout out to him, man. Um, oh my gosh <laughs> that golly that was an easy one i'm gonna go with another easy one while we're at it bb hills oh. do i even have to say oh. it's bb bro it's bb if you want to win put bb in as the team full gorilla guys say man um four three four four embodiment basically that's bb hills man I, he was just on fire throughout this entire thing didn't exactly like get the most amount of reps i would say at least compared to some other guys but bb hills was like doing his thing every single rep i don't think there's any doubt why um you know he's on team full gorilla and uh, i mean you know how shocked would you be if he didn't make team full gorilla cody That'd be one of the most surprising things to happen all season. If I'm counting it as a part of, you know, if even if it's the early part of the 22 season or the late part of the 21 season, I, don't, I wouldn't know how to react to it. Uh, I feel like he's a definite. And, uh, I mean, he was a part of the photo shoot, wasn't he, for, for the new uniforms? So I feel like yes. maybe that's a spoiler alert. But come, come on, man. That's what I'd have to say if uh, he didn't make it. He's, he's a dog. And, uh, you know, I think, obviously, Rock Cannon, they won their very first playoff game in program history this past fall season. And Horn and Rosenmeyer are huge parts of that. And they're going to continue to be huge parts of that, as well as, you know, uh, we've seen uh, one of their linemen as well at a different uh, workout that maybe we'll react to sometime and we somewhat talked about. But, uh, you know, those those guys impressed and, uh, you know, one guy that, you know, I kind of talked about a little bit earlier when talking about Paladino and that, you know, I'm going to talk about again. Well, obviously, B.B. Hills, that was a no-brainer. Also, you know, another thing about B.B. Hills, too. Um, cornerbacks who had to defend Braden Dorman throwing to B.B. Hills, they are on watch because, I mean, that combination is lethal uh their t their chemistry i mean brandon dorman already has phenomenal timing on his throws phenomenal poise smooth release 
BB Hills is already unguardable speed. There's like even the, some of the fastest guys, you know, running a straight line versus defending BB Hills running a straight line or running a wheel route is impossible. So, you know, then you have Brayden Dorman throwing to him. Oh, that's the Solomon play. That's the Solomon Latimer play. That's yeah, what I was talking Dirty about. Boy right here. Oh, my Lord. Yep. Look at this. Yep. What the yep. hell? Oh, you know, on the throw and look at it. You just, yeah, give me that. Give me that. And into the end zone. Oh my I love God. to see that. That I was losing my mind when I saw this. And then I looked through and I was like, oh, man, he plays for Doherty. That kind of stinks. But, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> every program has to have somebody. And uh, this Solomon Latimer is definitely that guy for Doherty. Look at this. Look at this freaking play. You know, watching the competition, there was a time where, like, the defense was winning so many reps in a row. So I needed a rep like this on the offensive side where he just says, give me that. And Blake Alvino's like, all right, I got you, fam. Like, this is, I'm going to put this in a place where you're going to be able to just... Oh, my Lord. The safety falls over. No disrespect. He was trying his best, but... That that's Solomon Latimer. He's a dude. There, he's there's tall, the wide receivers well, who were good. They were elite, and they are going to yes. put the state on on watch this year. Uh, yes. Solomon, he's going to be a junior actually, so he'll have two more seasons. Then you know, uh, DeAndre Horn, BB Hills, uh, those guys. They're they're seniors, and they're also going to torch a lot of cornerbacks this year. Yes, man, you got hype for that. <laughs> dude oh my come on man that was a great play i didn't even see it until then so that's uh that's kind of crazy not gonna lie i can't that's believe i crazy. kept the camera still because i caught i was like i know that i hit stop immediately because i was shaking my phone like let's go dude oh my lord oh my lord what a <laughs> Let's let's keep it going. Let's keep oh. it going because there's still a, a okay. Nice Seven, start talking about someone else. Or I'm gonna have a heart attack. Okay, uh, I do want to mention a shout out to Caden Box here, the quarterback from Skyline. I think he has a lot of potential. This last year, he definitely had some challenges. Man, uh, look, I know he was working through injuries and whatnot, then kind of got back into his groove here at the end. But Caden Box has an extremely strong arm. Oh, he has an extremely strong arm, and he's so talented. But I think his biggest thing, and maybe it showed just because he was playing with some, uh, you know, with, with some uh, with some talent that's a little, like, you know, shaky over there at Skyline. But, uh, well, not super shaky, but I think he just needs to work on his timing, man. Like, there, it's, it's kind of obvious that when he does throw, that he is throwing towards where he sees Stay the on ball. that clip. For a yeah. sec, by the way. Wait, what? And so, I said, stay on this clip. Um, just after we're done talking about Caden Box, I do want to talk about that defensive back next. Okay, sounds good. Um, but yeah, just I think he could do a little bit more work here. Uh, it's hard, you know. He, he's he's gonna get comfortable moving forward here. But I think he's somebody that has a lot of potential going into his senior year. I just want to leave it at that. You know, I just want to leave it at that. He showed me enough. You know, he showed me enough. I think he knows what he needs to work on moving forward, and that's all you could really hope for. So, yeah. But uh, go ahead, Cody. Uh, is it this clip right here? Yeah. So, um, I'm it. sorry to do you like this, Austin. Uh, don't take this as any disrespect. But this guy who makes the play here, this defensive back, uh, this is uh, Jason Tom. So, I talked about Tyson Thom. I don't know if they're related. But Jason Tom here, he's a class of 23 defensive back. He played sa he repped safety all weekend uh, out of Rouston Valley. And he's going to be on our list. He's a, a potential watch guy for our list. He kind of was the biggest surprise, I'd say, of this entire weekend. He won the defensive highlight for the 18U. This was one of, like, five picks he had on Sunday alone. He was going off. I think if you look at the next clip, he gets another interception on uh, Levi Paxton. So you have this, you know. He just showed great anticipation and verticality. Like, he look how high he is on that interception, you know? That's incredible extension. I think he gets a pick on Levi Paxton in this next one. Uh, that is definitely a completion, Cody. Okay, no, but he, there was one point where he had back-to-back -back interceptions and he picked off Levi Paxton, and maybe it was Heidel back-to-back -back or something like that. But he had himself a day in this 18U group. Uh, shout out to Levi Paxton and all of our Florence guys. Um, 
for you know their support and whatnot but yeah uh tom he or thom tom uh however you say it he was oh there he is there he is again that's the pick so it was two plays apart or well, there was a play in between is what i should say but i mean he just jumps in front of this post route he ex so you know he shows timing and anticipation on that and then you know he shows verticality and athleticism on the pick on austin Moderzuski. And, uh, yeah, he had himself a very phenomenal weekend. I know that uh, we have a complex relationship with uh, at least the RV program. But, you know, they still have some guys out there. And what Mason was telling us as far as them coming out and slinging the ball in that playoff game, you know, I think that gives us a lot of hope. And when some of those RV guys came up to us out of the program, we said, hey, are you pass the ball. That's exciting. When they line up with four wide and Mason was like, oh, hey, you know, this is. This is exciting stuff, and that kind of stuff, along with this defensive play that, you know, they've been kind of known for for the past few years, if they can open up a passing game and just kind of admit to where their faults may have been in the past years, then they might be able to take that next step. But, uh, you know, Jason here, shout out to him, defensive highlight guy of, of the weekend at TFG and a great defensive back at the bare minimum as a solo player showed that he could do it for any program. Yeah, absolutely. He impressed. I'm not even going to lie. He impressed. I know we do have a complicated, <laughs> if you want to call it that, relationship with Ralston Valley. But I don't have anything against the players, man. I think he played great. Um, really showed out. Was one of the best safeties out there for sure. Um, And that's in that's in a safety group that includes, like, Diego Cerns and stuff. So, like. Yeah, it's a pretty good group. I mean, obviously, we don't. <laughs> I think they know it's a pretty good group if they're out here, you know. Um, shoot, man. Ty. Ty uh, Mabe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of our favorite players, you know, in the state of Colorado. Uh, he was shouted out <laughs> by uh, Jaden Allen on that interview. And, uh, you know, as, as the leader of that FFC defense that, you know, played very well this year. One of the top defenses in the state of Colorado. And he's going to continue to keep that culture. He's a highly recruited prospect. Yes. You know, I'd say even across the nation. And he's going to be a guy, a returning guy for TFG. Who, you know, maybe in May, <laughs> we did see him struggle in that streak. But that's not really his game. He did survey the middle of the field great. Had some tips that led to interceptions. And he's a very smart football player who's going to recognize what the offense is doing whether that's at tfg or otherwise well yeah i mean everyone should know about ty great guy as well great <laughs> man just, just such a good guy i love that dude um shoot man i think we're kind of getting to the end of the line here um kai I, is a goat see i want to say the pine creek receiver tied in uh cody you kind of pointed him out here I think you said you thought he was a receiver, but he's a tight end. He had really good route running and whatnot. That's someone that I wanted to shout out as well. Yeah. Yep. Good route running. Work on those hands, but good route running. Yep. Oh, our boy Richard Okuno from uh, Thunder Ridge. Uh, you can yes, talk sir. about him more. You saw him play more, but I mean, I, I got to meet the dude more more so. So I didn't really get to see too much of his uh, play. But what a nice guy, man really like that dude uh do you want to talk about his actual play though yeah absolutely you know that you know he was put on to us by uh gabe cardenas shout out to glove work you know uh kind of helping uh thunder ridge produce some of the top stud wide receivers you know this past year and for the future but richard Acuno, you know he's he's a guy that i'd say is easy to overlook in the literal sense because you know he is on the smaller side but his footwork and his route running, oh my gosh, he's another guy who had a defensive back completely twisted up and spun around. Because, you know, he's going, he takes a hard jab step to sell that out route. Then he goes to that in route and takes two steps, you know. And uh, by this point, you know, the defensive back, his hips are like pointed outside and he's bringing them inside and his like upper body, he's trying to catch up. And then he hits, bang, cut right back outside and just easy completions for quarterbacks throwing to Richard Acuno, honestly. And, uh, you know, that's great news for a friend of the podcast and uh, future Thunder Ridge QB for sure. But Richard, he's a dog, and uh, he's going to have an explosive year and could be, you know, kind of a... Uh, you no, know, it's hard for slot receivers to make top five lists. We've said this in the past, but uh, he could be like Jack Pierce 2 with a more crisp route running. 
uh, once again, shout out to Glove Work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh, um, shoot. There's not too many, uh, too, too many. There's a lot of names that we're going to miss because yeah, we maybe already their numbers we weren't in place or shout out to Josh maybe we, we just, second. we couldn't be everywhere at the same time. Yes. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of ballers there. The coaching, phenomenal. And, uh, Overall, a phenomenal experience. I already can't wait to, A, see what they do uh, this upcoming year, and B, look forward to next year. Yeah, so I think we're kind of wrapping it up here. Uh, look, any other takeaways here, Cody? I, I do want to shout out some of the guys who did come and introduce themselves to us. Uh, Jay Kim from Cherry Creek. That's my guy, man. He had a nice day. I didn't mention him in 15 years, but I should have. You know, he was getting tested a lot. But he, he held up, you know. I, I liked how uh, he was able to compete. Um, shoot, Alex Jordan from Valor Christian. Look, I know we've been... <laughs> Flex, thank you. Yeah, we, we've been up and down with Valor Christian, but man, do I respect that boy. I like that guy, you know. Um, he introduced himself. I think, uh, well, Valor should pass the ball more so that he could actually shine. But I, I like his game as well. So, uh, so yeah, Cody, is there anybody else you want to shout out here that we may have forgotten here? I'm glad that you brought up Alex Jordan. He's a big body who could be a huge mismatch at tight end. And, uh, you know, even the TFG coaches recognize that, you know, he caught this pass and he was barreling out of bounds. And, uh, you know, what, one of the guys was like, Hey, uh, slow down there, Jordan. And you know, I can't stop you. And, you know, I think that that's a reaction that a lot of DBs and linebackers could have to this guy. And I respect the heck out of him because, you know, he came up to us and he was like, hey, man, um, you know, you were kind of dogging on us a little bit. What's up with that? And, you know, we we're like, we just said, hey, it's not personal. We call it how we see it. Go tell your coaches to pass the ball more and, you know, be a part of the solution as far as like fixing that culture. And I think that he is, honestly. It, with that attitude of introducing himself to us despite you know our opinions on valor another complicated relationship one might say but uh you know i think that that gives me some hope that you know maybe he could step into a leadership role and kind of help straighten some things out but simon is highlighting other takeaways here um, no that's just to show where we're at sorry um oh <laughs> i was like am i is there something that you want me to say simon no, not really. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Someone did ask, do you guys know when we when we will know if we made the team? I know Japri got his confirmation today that he made the squad. So I would assume today and tomorrow they're going to be sending out emails and all that great stuff telling you whether you make it or not. I know, uh, John, he did say that, you know, whether you make it or not, they're still going to reach out to you. So, like, you're going to for sure know, like, you know, whether you made it or not. Um, just as a courtesy thing, and that's just another reason why I respect them. And so, uh, there you go. Uh, they will. You should know soon. Here is what I would assume, because they do leave for the road here, kind of, kind of soon here. They leave in February, I think, right, Cody? So, that's um, that's when Team Full Gorilla will get it going here. You know, but um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, Team Full Gorilla, I love what they do. Even if you don't make the team, I would highly encourage players. From all over the state, hey, make the trip up to Denver, man. You know, let us meet you. At the worst, look, 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 okay? You know, you're going to go out there. You're going to compete. You're going to get your combine numbers, which you need anyways, you know? And so think when you're paying that fee, that's that's part of where that goes because that is invaluable. You know, those numbers are things that every single coach is going to ask for for pretty much every sport. So there you go. Uh, and then on top of that, you're competing. So you're going to get to see the guys that are out there doing their thing. And then also, I mean, there, there are some guys that are probably going to make the NFL. I'm going to be real with you. There's some NFL talent uh, with these guys here. And so that's always a fun thing just to have that connection. And then we'll be there. You know, um, this was honestly awesome. Like a huge shout out to John and Charles and um, Gerlach and Rosemont, all those guys, all the coaches, Dooley. You know, man, I have a ton of love for them, a ton of respect for them. 
they do it for the kids. You know, I, I am 100% confident in saying that. They do a lot of good work out there, man. They give kids opportunities to show what they got. You know, and I think when it comes to Colorado football, what more could you ask for, right? And I think that's just a great thing what they're doing over there. Also, they're not trying to get your money. You know, they're truly trying to see who's who's the best out here, right? That was definitely the vibe from day one. And, uh, you know, that's why they invited us out there so that we could evaluate some of the kids, you know, build relationships with some of y'all so that we can push your film out as well. Because that's what we do. We have a lot of college coaches that listen to our podcast. Um, I'm just going to be real with you. There are probably more coaches that we don't know about that listen to our podcast than coaches that we know about and do listen to our podcast. I know for a fact a couple coordinators from our own um, alum, or wait, sorry, it's not alum. Alma We're alum. Uh, from our alma mater, uh, University of Northern Colorado, they do follow us. And, you know, if we be posting about a kid or whatnot, it's a uh, pretty good chance that they get offered uh, pretty soon here, you know, not, you know, not a 100% chance, but, you know, if you look at when, uh, you know, kids are posting, oh, I just got an offer from Northern Colorado, and when we talked about them last, put two and two together, you know, you're smart enough to do that. It's close. It is extremely close. Sometimes it's within the day. I... <laughs> they should pay us. I'm yeah. just playing. <laughs> yeah, like, I definitely made a post one time, and with, like, say, like, you and see where you at, you got off from this kid. And then literally 20 minutes later, that kid posted, blessed to get an offer from Northern Colorado. It'd be like that. Honestly, that's just how it'd be. And so, you know, we're out there at these Team Full Gorilla tryouts to check you out, to evaluate your talent, and to push your film out, man. Because there's too much talent here for not all of us to go D1. Or for a lot of y'all to at least go D1. And if not D1, go D2. You could still get a full ride scholarship or as close to a full ride as you could get and still have a really fun, well, you know, fun and obviously good uh, college career, you know, and then get a degree. That's always important. As an educator, degrees are important, man. And, you know, if you could get it for free, why wouldn't you, you know? Why wouldn't you? You know, and it starts with going to these tryouts, man. It starts to reaching out to us. We are always open to talk to people, man. Like the number of kids that came up to us, it was great. You know, we made, we tried to make as much time for each kid as possible, especially, uh, you know, if you are reaching out to us in our DMs, by the way, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Playmakers Corner. You know, we try to respond as soon as possible. We do get pretty busy, you know, with the content we're trying to get out here, but we do our best for sure. And so, can't thank the Team Full Gorilla guys enough. This was an amazing opportunity. Can't wait for next year, obviously. I think next year will be great. We'll see more talent. And, uh, you know, I think we will be at least at one Team Full Gorilla game. I know uh, another 7-on-7 seven -seven team, the Ducks, they, they want to they wanna play Team Full Gorilla here. And the Ducks are an up-and-coming program. And so, uh, we'll, we'll probably be at that if that does go down, for sure. So, uh, so yeah, Cody, is there anything else you want to add on here before we uh, get out of here, get some dinner? We're going to be at Team Ducks tryouts uh, next Sunday, or this upcoming Sunday, however you want to say that. So that's exciting. We're excited to see that. And, uh, yeah, shout out to all these players who did try out and at least tried. And at the bare minimum, you got better coaching than you may be used to uh, from these TFG guys. Um, other than that, if you're looking for more places to learn how to be a better player, definitely listen to our podcast. We post, you know, like at least two episodes a week, basically, bare minimum one episode a week. And uh, we try and keep this content up for y'all. And uh, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, as well as, you know, continuing to find us on Twitch. Go ahead and, you know, follow us so that you get notified anytime we go live. We're going to try and do it a lot more. We're going to try and post these videos to YouTube. So go ahead and look up Playmakers Corner on YouTube. You can get notifications on when we're going to live stream on Twitch on our Twitter at Playmaker Corner. You can find us on Instagram, Playmakers Corner, where we post a lot of our graphics and our episodes and the link tree to find those episodes. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, TikTok. Go ahead and follow us on TikTok as well and we post content there i'm going to be getting these top five running back tiktoks up and running here in these next few days so go ahead and listen to that episode as well as you know a lot of our other episodes of our top five guys that include a lot of former tfg alums oh 
man, it's starting to get a, become a real earful. We produce a lot of content, and it's all for y'all. Uh, we love you guys, and we appreciate you guys. Yes. Um, this live stream will be posted on YouTube. Audio should be on Spotify as well. So if it's that, like, you know, cut up and all that great stuff perfectly, that's because it wasn't meant to. This was, this was just a one-shot type of thing. And also, I'm not going to edit this one hour 44 thing before midnight today. I'm just going to post it. And so you can listen it. You can listen to it, or you don't have to. That's okay. <laughs> you know, but hey, uh, appreciate all of y'all in the chat that was rocking with us. And, uh, you know, if you were listening to this somewhere else, appreciate y'all as well, obviously. But uh, that'll wrap up this stream. We'll catch y'all later. Peace.